This video will describe the RockWorks fault table and how it can be used when interpolating and displaying grids and solid models. RockWorks 20 stores faults within a new table called the RockWorks Fault Manager. All of the programs within RockWorks that use faults load them from this table. Unlike previous versions, faults are stored as a table within the main RockWorks SQL database rather than separate files. The basic and standard versions of RockWorks are limited to three faults, whereas the advanced version is unlimited. The fields within the fault table are defined as follows. The enabled checkbox defines if the fault is to be used by the RockWorks programs during model interpolation and when creating diagrams. The fault name column is used when plotting labels. The dimension column designates if the fault is defined by a two-dimensional polyline or a three-dimensional triangle mesh. 2D faults consist of XY points that define vertical panels. 3D faults consist of triangle meshes that can dip and bend. The line style column will be used when showing the fault in 2D. The fill color column is used when showing the fault as a 3D surface. The G value column is used to assign values to the block model nodes, a concept that will be covered towards the end of this presentation. Although some of these properties can be changed directly within this table, it's more straightforward to click on the Edit Fault button. The menu that will appear for the currently selected fault provides access to some additional properties such as embellishments to the 2D fault polylines. The Display button allows for a quick display of all enabled faults. The 2D Map option will plot 2D faults as polylines as shown by the diagram on the right within the Embedded Help documentation. 3D faults can be plotted within 2D maps in one of three ways. The 3D triangle mesh in plan view, the fault trace where the 3D triangles intersect a horizontal plane, or the fault trace where the 3D triangles intersect a grid surface. The 3D map program will plot 2D faults as vertical panels and 3D faults as surfaces made up of triangles. Note that these portions of the 2D and 3D display program menus are embedded within all of the RockWorks programs that involve faulting. The Import button provides 11 different tools for importing and defining faults that will be added to the fault table. Let's look at two of them, starting with the Polyline to 2D Fault Import program. Before clicking the Polyline to 2D Fault option, however, the coordinates for points along the fault must be entered, imported, or copy-pasted into the RockWorks datasheet. In this example, a tutorial file titled Fault Import Polyline has been loaded. Note that the coordinates system need not be the same as the project coordinates because they'll be automatically converted. More specifically, these coordinates can represent UTMs, state plane coordinates, longitude, latitude, etc. Next, the Polyline to 2D Fault option is selected from the Fault Manager Import menu. The fault attributes are defined, the Continue button is selected, and the new fault will be added to the project database as a 2D fault. Next, a 3D fault will be added to the fault table by using the Dips to 3D Fault program. As with the Polyline to 2D Fault program, the coordinates for points along the fault are entered into the RockWorks datasheet. In this example, a tutorial file titled Fault Import Dips has been loaded. For this type of import, points along the fault surface are defined by XYZ coordinates, dip direction, inclination, down dip projection distance, and up dip projection distance. In this way, very complex fault surfaces, including scissors faults and even helical faults, can be defined. This diagram illustrates how this information is used to create a triangle matrix. Specifically, lines projected upslope and downslope form the limbs of the triangles that constitute the matrix. Next, the Dips to 3D Fault option is selected from the Fault Manager Import menu. The fault attributes are defined, the Continue button is pressed, and 
The new fault will be added to the project database as a 3D fault. Here's a completely different way to add faults to the fault table. When viewing a map within the Rockplot 2D program, select the Draw, Line Types, Polyline option and draw the fault trace. When finished, highlight the polyline and click the right mouse button. Select the Save as 2D Fault option, assign a name to the fault, and click the Continue button. The digitized polyline has now been added to the fault table. Here's how faults are used when gridding and solid modeling within Rockworks. Gridding is a process in which an imaginary grid is superimposed over the project area. A value for each grid cell is estimated based on the surrounding control points. These grids can be color-coded to create contour maps along with dozens of other uses. With fault-constrained gridding, the influence of a control point on the cell estimation is diminished if a line between the cell and the control point intersects a fault. Gridding without faulting is fast. Gridding with faulting is slow. Solid modeling, on the other hand, interpolates values for a three-dimensional matrix of voxels or 3D cells. In this example, the two green triangles represent a simple non-vertical 3D fault mesh. When estimating a voxel value, imaginary lines are drawn between the voxel midpoint to each control point. If the line intersects a fault triangle, the corresponding control point's influence on the voxel estimation is diminished. It's really quite simple, but it's also quite slow when dealing with large solids and lots of complex faults. Now, let's look at how this works within two Rockworks programs. The first example will start with 642 XYZ points. The goal is to interpolate a faulted grid model and to display it as a two-dimensional contour map and a three-dimensional surface diagram. In the next step, all of the faults except for the Graben West and the recently digitized escarpment fault are disabled. Next, the XYZ to Grid program is selected from the ModOps Grid Create submenu. This description will focus on just the fault-related items. If the selected algorithm is to model the data as constrained by the enabled faults, the faulted option within the Grid Model Options menu must be checked. This double gridding option only applies to 3D faults. It will force the program to precisely contour the regions immediately adjacent to the faults. It is seldom used because it doubles the processing time and the effect is barely noticeable. The smoothing option will honor the faults, meaning that it does not smooth the grid across the faults. The Map menu includes an option that will omit, if desired, contour line segments adjacent to contour lines. The Map Overlays submenu contains another item titled Faults. This option has nothing to do with whether or not the faults will be considered during the modeling. Instead, it is used solely to define whether or not faults will be included within the 2D map output. This submenu merits some explanation. 3D faults can be plotted in plan view as fault triangles if it is unknown ahead of time where a 3D fault triangle mesh will intersect a surface since it doesn't exist yet, or the elevation of a horizontal plane can be used to define the fault trace, or an existing grid can be used to determine the intersections. In this example, the name of the grid that's going to be created will be used. When plotting the 2D polylines formed by the fault grid intersections, it is possible to smooth the polylines, add labels at specified intervals, and plot the symbols defined within the fault table at specified intervals. The 3D Diagram tab has yet another faults option that is only used to define if the faults should be displayed within 3D diagrams. When plotting in 3D, both the 2D and the 3D faults can be plotted as triangle meshes and or color-filled triangles or 
Fault trace polylines that snake along the surface can be plotted based on the fault grid intersections. Just like the 2D faults, these intersections can be based on the faulted grid. The vertical offset option is useful for floating the fault traces just above the surface to make them more noticeable. The upper and lower elevations for 3D faults are defined during import within the fault manager. Two defaults, on the other hand, do not have this embedded elevation information. Instead, the upper and lower elevations can be automatically based on the project dimensions, or they can be manually specified. Once these items have been set, it's time to press the Continue button. After about two minutes, a map like the one shown on the right will appear. For comparison, the unfaulted version is shown on the left. Notice how the steep slope within the unfaulted version has become a vertical escarpment within the faulted version. Here are some 3D views of the same surfaces. Compare the slope within the unfaulted version to the vertical escarpment within the faulted version. For reference, the fault panels have been added to the surface within the rightmost diagram. One last example of faulting in grid models will now be presented before moving on to solid or block model faulting. We'll start by selecting two 3D faults that define the margins of a graben. Next, the layered model program will be selected from the borehole operations stratigraphy submenu. For this to work properly, we need to activate the faulting when interpolating the surfaces and we need to show the faults within the diagram that will be based on these interpolated surfaces. The final output is shown here as a faulted stratigraphy model. The iData to solid model program will now be used to illustrate fault constrained solid or block modeling. The faulted option will constrain the solid modeling based on the enabled faults. The assign G values to fault nodes option will be described later on. For now, it will be turned off. Before pressing the Continue button, remember that if we want to see the faults themselves, we must enable the fault display. Here's the output, showing lead values above a specified threshold as constrained by the two Graben faults. The animation tools within Rockworks can be used to fully examine the effects of the faulting in three dimensions. Finally, the lithology modeling program will be used to demonstrate the usefulness of the fault G values. First, however, the Graben fault G values are changed from null or minus 1.0 times 10 to the 27th to minus 99. Next, a new lithotype called fault gouge is added to the lithology types table with an assigned G value of minus 99, just like the Graben faults. Now, we'll load the lithology modeling program menu and identify the salient options. Once again, we must specify if the modeling, not the diagram of the model, is to be constrained by the faults. Also, note that there's an option here to assign the fault G values to the voxels through which they pass. As always, we'll also need to separately specify if the faults should be displayed within the output diagram. Once the results are displayed, notice how the voxels along the fault are red, the color assigned to the fault gouge lithotype. For comparison, a model without assigning faults as a lithotype is displayed in the lower right corner. Using non-null G values for faults has useful implications for geothermal modeling in which steam is moving along the faults, hydrogeologic modeling in which sealed faults may serve as aquitards, groundwater contamination in which open faults may act as hydrological pathways, and hydrothermal mineralization in which metal-bearing fluids have migrated along the faults.
Needless to say, it is also possible to display faults within other types of RockWorks output, such as cross sections and fence diagrams that are based on grid and solid models. Fault constrained solid modeling with 3D faults is slow. On the other hand, fault constrained gridding with 2D faults is much faster. Fault information is embedded within grids and solids as metadata, which is handy when revising old projects. Remember, faults must be independently enabled for modeling and display. One final consideration. In this list of RockWorks markets, applications that typically don't involve faulting are shown in light gray. However, faults can be used to create break lines to limit the modeling for other parameters such as excavation boundaries.